In this video, we'll see how we can build a search modal dialog using headless UI and Tailwind CSS. We'll go through styling the elements, displaying the correct keyboard combination based on the user operating system, using the key combination to open the model, adding transitions to make everything smoother, navigate through the results using arrow keys, and more. As a starting point, we have a blank page component that imports and uses the search model component we're going to build. The model itself doesn't contain anything but the search button. Let's style the button. We'll do border, border gray 900. And this is of course too dark, but we can reduce the opacity to 10% by adding slash 10. Let's add some shadow. PX3 PY 1.5 for padding. On hover we'll do border gray 300. And then on focus we'll remove the default outline and set the border to border gray 300. And let's also round it a bit using rounded LG. Now the button looks okay, but it would be nice to have like a search icon on the left and the keyboard shortcut that will open the model on the right. So let's add those. I'll paste in the SVG icon, use a span for the search text and another one for the keyboard shortcut. Now let's style them, but first let's add some spacing between these three elements. I'll go to the parent and add flex, items center, space x2. Then for the SVG we'll do flex none, and this will prevent the element from shrinking, text gray 400, and let's bring it a bit to the left using a negative margin. Then for the search, We'll do text sm, text gray 400, and I want this element to push the others to the sides, so I'll add flex 1, and then text left to align the text. Finally, for the keyboard shortcut, we'll do flex none to prevent it from shrinking, text xs, font semi bold, text gray 400. And we're done styling the button. However, it's a bit too narrow. We could style it here, but I would like to let whoever is using the component to control the width. So we'll set the width here where the component is used. We'll do class width 72 for example. And there we go. Now for the keyboard shortcut, I went with command K, but some people have Windows or Linux computers where they need to use the control key. So let's check the operating system and show the appropriate combination. Here in setup, we'll create a function called isAppleOS. We'll need to grab the platform of the user. And for new browsers, we can access Navigator, User Agent Data, Platform. But this is not supported on all browsers, so we'll use Navigator.platform as backup. And even set a default unknown value. Then we can return a regex that will check if the platform includes any of the Apple OS device names. Now we can use this function to set the value of the keyboard shortcut. We'll do is Apple OS, then command K, otherwise is control plus K. Let's expose it and then use it in our template. And let's also check the non-Apple version by changing this. And here it is. Undo. And there we go. Moving on to the model itself, let's import the dialog and dialog overlay components from Headless UI. Register them. And then start using them under the button. We'll do dialog. And then inside it, dialog overlay and the div to hold the model contents. Now the dialog component requires an open prop, so let's set it to is open. And then the dialog also emits a close event when the escape key is pressed or when the user clicks on the dialog overlay. So let's add that as well. On close, we'll set is open to false. Before we continue styling the dialog elements, let's make sure we expose an is open reactive object. I'll go here in the setup and do const is open equals ref 
and set the default value to true. Expose it. And let's also import the ref function from view. Let's continue with the styling. For the dialog, we want it to be a fixed element that will take up the whole screen. So we'll do fixed inset zero, and to make sure it shows over any other element in the page, we'll set its index to a high number like Z50. And then use flex, justify center, to center the model contents on the screen. For the dialog overlay, we'll need to make it stretch all over the screen and have like a transparent background. So we'll do fixed, inset zero, BG black, and then BG opacity 70. Finally, the model content can be something like width full, max width to excel to reduce its width, BG white, rounded LG to make it rounded, MX4 to add some horizontal margin, and to set a maximum height value, we'll hard code it using max H and then square brackets ATVH, which represents 80% of the viewport. Let's also add some margin top, and finally, let's add relative to bring it on top of the overlay. To prevent the model from stretching, we can go to its parent, this flex here, and say items start. I don't know if you noticed, but as soon as we've added the dialog and dialog overlay components, the button shrank back to its initial size. Previously, we only had the button element and view knew how to bind the class to attribute to it. Now that we have two elements, we need to be more specific and tell view to which element to bind the attributes passed to the component. We want to bind the class attribute to the button element, so we'll say vbind, attributes, save, and here it is, our button is wide again. Our model closes when we click on the overlay or press the escape key, but currently there is no way to open the model. I would like it to open when I click on the search button or use the command K shortcut. Let's tackle the first one. Here on the button, we'll do a click and set is open to true. And here it is. Open, close, open, close. Now for the keyboard shortcut, we can go to our setup function and tap into the unmounted hook. Here we can add an event listener for the key down event. We'll do window, add event listener, key down, function, and we'll receive the event as argument. Then we can check if the model is already opened, and if that's the case, we just return early. Otherwise, we continue checking if the pressed keys match our expected combination. So if event meta key or event control key, and this matches the command key on Mac or the control key, and event key equals equals K, then we set this open value to true, which will open the model. Let's extract this into a function. I'll cut this and say on key down. And here I'll do const on key down and paste in the function. Then when the component is unmounted, we'll remove the event listener. So window remove event listener, key down on key down. If we go in the browser, we can open the model by clicking on it. Let's close it. And now I am on a Mac device so if I press Command K, the model opens. Isn't that nice? We've styled the button, we've styled the model, we added a keyboard shortcut to open the model, it would also be nice to add some transitions to make everything smoother. But before we do this, let's set the initial is open value to false, so we start with a closed model. Now, I want to transition the overlay opacity from 0 to 100 when we open the model, and then bring it down from 100 to 0 when we close it. At the same time, I want to have like a scale effect for the model content. To add and coordinate these two transitions, we'll need to use the transition root and transition child components from the headless UI library. So let's import them and then register them. The transition root component will wrap the whole dialog. And then we'll have two transition child components, one for the overlay and one for the model content. By default, these components are rendered as div elements, 
but that will mess up with our layout, so I'll tell them to render as template elements instead. Then the transition root component has a show prop that controls the transition. Let's set this to is open. Now everything is in place for us to add our desired transitions. The transition child component has a couple of props we can use to control the transition. First, we have the enter prop, and here we can set the classes we want to apply during the whole entering phase. We usually define the duration and the easing of the transition. Let's set this to duration 200, is out. Is out will transition fast at the beginning and then slow down towards the end. Then we have the enter from prop, and here we'll define our starting point. We want to start from opacity 0. Next up we have enter 2, which is where we want to end up when the transition finishes, which will be opacity 100. These three props are used when we open the model. We have similar props for closing the model, but instead of enter, we have leave. On these leaves props, we need to do the reverse of what we did on the enter props. So instead of is out, which is fast at the beginning and slow towards the end, we'll use is in, which is slow at the beginning and fast at the end. Instead of starting from opacity 0, we'll now begin from opacity 100. And instead of ending with opacity 100, we'll end up with opacity 0. So the leave props are the reverse of the enter props. For the model content, we want the same opacity transition, so I'll copy and paste them, but we also want it to scale a little bit. So in addition to the opacity, we'll also add scale classes. When we open the model, we'll start with a scale of 95 and transition to a scale of 100. Then when we close the model, we'll start with a scale of 100 and end up with 95. And that's it. Let's test it out. Open the model, close the model. Open the model, close the model. Smooth as butter. Let's move on to the search form. The form will contain three elements. One div to hold the SVG search icon, which I'll paste in. A search input with placeholder search. And another div to hold an escape button that when pressed will close the model. Let's open the model and here they are. Now the SVG icon will have width 5, h5, and text gray 700. The form itself will be a flex, and to center the items, we'll use item center. Next up, we want to position the icon over the form input. So the container will be absolute, inset y0, left 0 to push it to the left, and then to center the icon, we can use flex, item center. Finally, let's add in some left padding using PL4 and set pointer events none to let the user focus the input when clicking directly on the icon. Moving on to the input, we'll do with full PY4 for vertical padding and PL12 to add enough left padding for the text to be visible. Border B, border gray 100, outline none, and then placeholder gray 400 to style the placeholder. For the button container, we'll do absolute inset y0, right 0 to push the element to the right, flex item center to center the button, and then add some right padding. Then for the button itself, we'll do flex item center to align the content, p 1.5 for padding, uppercase font semi bold, tracking wider to make the text more legible text gray 700, rounded MD to make it rounded, border, border gray 200, and then on focus we'll do outline none, and focus, border gray 300. Now the button label is too big, we'll need to create a new utility class called text XXS. To add the new font size, open your Tailwind config file, go under theme extend, add the font size key, then the name of the font size, which is whatever we have after text dash, in our case we have XXS. This will be an array where the first element is the font size, let's set it to 0.65 rems, 
and we can use a second object argument to set the line height. Let's say 1.1 rem. Let's save. And here it is, our label is way smaller. Now, if you remember, our model was supposed to be rounded. However, because we have some absolute elements in place, we also need to set overflow hidden here on the model container. Save, and we're done styling the model. Let's move on with the search functionality. Here, on the search field, we'll add an input event listener that will receive the event as a parameter and call a search function with the field value. To get the field value, we can do event.target.value. Now let's go to our setup and define the search function. But before we do that, let's define a results reactive object to store the search results. This will be an array. Let's add the search function. We'll receive term as a parameter and then make an access get request to the endpoint that will return the results. In my case, I have this dummy endpoint at tollpad test slash search. To send the term as a query parameter, we can pass a second object that will have params and then an object with the term key containing our search term. Let's console log the results. And since we're using a wait, we'll have to turn this function into a sync one and then make sure we import access. Then let's expose the results and the search function, go in the browser, open the model, open the dev tools, type something in, and here's our request. We're passing term as a query parameter, and if we look at the logs, we see the results being logged in. Back to our search function, we can use destructuring to get the data, and then results.value equals data. One thing I want to do is make sure we debounce this function so it's not being called with every keystroke. We'll do debounce, paste in the function, and let's say 250 milliseconds. Let's import the debounce function from Lodash, go in the browser, refresh, open the view dev tools, open the model, and type in Laravel. The results are empty, but if we refresh, here they are. Moving on, let's add the list and loop through the results to display them. We'll go here under the form and do ul, and we'll only show this if we have results, so v if results.length bigger than zero, then we'll do li v4 item index in results, we'll set the key to index, and then we'll have an image where the source will be item featured image, the alt will be item.title, and then we'll have a container with one div for the title and another one for the item category. Save, and the results appear. But the form is a bit broken. The search icon and escape button are centered to the model instead of just the form input. That's because these two are absolute elements and the form is missing the relative class. Let's add it and the issue is gone. Another problem has to do with the images not being displayed. So let's scroll down to them. And here's a problem. It should be featured image. Save, and here they are. Let's continue styling the results. For the li, we'll do flex, item center, px4 and py2.5 for padding. The image will have width 16, H16, rounded full, object cover. We'll also add a white border using border white, border 2, and to prevent the image from shrinking, we'll add shrink 0. And let's also add the BG Gray 200 to show like a placeholder while the image is being loaded. For the title and category container, we'll just add a bit of left margin. Then for the title, we'll have font semi bold, text gray 600. And for the category, we'll have text excess, text gray 600, and empty one for margin. And here they are. It would be nice to have like a border separating the items, so let's go to our list element and add divide y, divide gray 100. Now the list looks somewhat nice, but if I try and scroll it, it doesn't work. To make the list scrollable, we need to do two things. 
The first is wrap it into a parent container that has an overflow auto class. And the second is to make that container take the remaining space of the model. To do that, we can go to our model container and turn it into a vertical flex using flex, flex call. Save, and here it is. We can now scroll the list. Another thing that's missing is the anchor tag. We want the whole list item to be clickable. To do that, we can go to our li element and add an anchor tag, fill in the ref attribute, and then inside it, we'll add a span, absolute, inset zero, and make the li relative. Now, if I go into browser, we see that the whole list item is clickable. One last thing I want to do is to add a message for when there are no results to be displayed. I'll go here under the list and say p v if results length equals equals zero, no results. And let's style it a bit. We'll do p to 10 to add some padding, text lg, text center, text gray 400. Let's test it out. And here it is. Finally, let's make sure that when we open the model, the results are already there. So we'll go to our setup and let's say on mounted, we'll do this and search. Let's make sure we move these two after the results and search function. Save, refresh, and here it is. Now for the final trick, let's see how we can navigate the results by only using the arrow keys. We'll need a couple of things. We'll need a list of references to all of our list items. I'll go inside the setup, here under results, and do const results refs equals ref, and this will be an empty array. Then we'll need to know the index of the current item or the selected item. So let's do const selected index equals ref and the initial value will be zero. So the first item in the list will be selected by default. Let's expose these two. And then to fill in the array of refs, we'll go to our v4 and do ref equals el for element results refs of index equals the current element. So basically, as we are looping through the elements, we set the results refs of index to the current element in the loop. However, we also need to make sure we reset the list every time we load the new results. So I'll go inside the search method And here we'll do a wait, next tick, because we want to reset the list on the next DOM update cycle, and then do results refs value equals an empty array. Next up, we also need to differentiate the selected item from the other items in the list. So let's go up and add a class for it. We'll do class, and if the selected index equals the current index, then we'll add BG gray 100. Otherwise nothing. Let's open the model. And here is our first item being selected with a BG Gray 100 class. Since we are here, we can also listen to the mouse move event and set the selected index to the current one. So every time the mouse is moved over an item, that item's index is being set as the selected one. So if I refresh and hover the items, the selected index value is being updated with the one we hover. Moving on, we'll need to go to our dialog component and tell it to listen to the key down event. And when that happens, call a navigate results function. This function will check the key that has been pressed and increase or decrease the selected index number. 
Let's grab it, go to our setup, and we'll do const, and we'll receive the event as parameter, and then we'll switch the event code, and we'll have two cases. The first one is arrow down. And the second one is arrow up. Now, when we press down, if we reached the end of the list, we'll need to go back up to the first item. So if the selected index value equals equals results value length minus one, then we'll set the selected index value to zero. Otherwise, we'll increase the value with one. So we'll do selected index value plus equals one. Let's expose the method. Refresh the browser, open the model, press down, and here it is. However, if I go past this list, the item is being selected, but we need a way to scroll it into view. We can do that by grabbing the reference of the selected item. So we can go here, in the navigate results function and do results refs value of the selected index value. And if that element exists, scroll it into view. Let's test it out. I'll refresh, open the model, press down, and here it is. If I continue pressing down and reach the end of the list, if I press down one more time, we'll restart from the top. Let's continue with the up key. Now, if we reach the start of the list and we press up one more time, we should go to the end of the list. So if the selected index value equals equals zero, we'll do selected index value equals results value length minus one. Otherwise, we'll do selected index value minus equals one. So unless we are at the start of the list, we'll continue decreasing the selected index value. So now if I go down and then go up and up one more time, we are sent to the end of the list. There's one more problem needing our attention. And once we take care of it, we can move on to the form submit action. If I type something in, like Laravel, and press up, the cursor will go at the start of the input. Same if I press down, it will go to the end of the input. To prevent that from happening, we'll add a key down event on the input. Let's find it. Here it is. We'll do key down and call on term key down. Let's add this function. And what this function will do is it will prevent the event from propagating if the pressed key is either arrow up or arrow down. So if, and we'll have an array with arrow up and arrow down. If this array includes the event.code, which is the key that was pressed, let's receive the event as parameter, event prevent default. Let's expose this. Refresh, type something in, press up, press down, and the cursor stays in its position, which is what we wanted. Finally, let's go to our form element and add a submit event listener with the prevent modifier and call an on submit function. Let's grab this, go to our setup to define it. And what this will do is it will check if we have a selected element. And if that's the case, we'll set the window location to its URL. So we'll do if results value of the selected index value 
Then we'll do window location equals results value of selected index value dot URL. Let's expose this method. Refresh, open the model, search for something, press down, and let's say customizing larval sale. Press enter, and here it is. Go back, press command K to open the model, press down, let's say search media records by name, press enter, and here it is. And of course, it also works if I just use the mouse. So if I press this one, here it is. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe, click the bell button, all that good stuff. Bye.